Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. I wanted to give a quick update video about what decks I'm bringing to the second seasonal tournament, Cosmic Creation, along with the ideologies and card choices within these decks. The codes to all these decks will be in the description below. Before I get into the deck rundowns, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. The road to 5k is only about a thousand away and it's a huge milestone for me so it'd be awesome if you joined. I also stream on Twitch often so check me out over there if you're looking for live gameplay. I'll be streaming the tournament tomorrow along with re-uploading the games here on the channel for your viewing convenience. With that, let's get into the decks. So to no one's surprise, the first deck I'm going to be bringing and talking about is Mono Shadow Isles. This version though is a little bit different, it's got three teched in cards from another region. So the variation I used before um, was Pale Cascade and Hush. I took it in the solo queue for a little while, it was really really strong, and then both of those cards got hit. So now, no more Targon, we're going back to um, Culling Strike, which has been one of my favorite cards to tech into Mono Shadow, Shadow Isles over the past year. So let's talk about each of the cards. We have Arachnoid Horror and Elise and Mist Wraith in here for solid two drops. Arachnoid Horror is aggressively statted, he's a fearsome unit so he can attack and he can also block other uh, fearsome units. Elise is really amazing on attack 2, creates another body, she's kind of hard to deal with. Usually the opponents have to bank mana and then thermo beam for 3 or use get excited or something like that to get rid of her so she gains you value there. Glimpse Beyond is an amazing reactive tool in this deck, can stop Ezreal targets, can stop Swain damage targets, can just draw you cards as a response to removal spells always always useful. Uh, Vile Feast, early game removal tool, good for hitting Zoe, good for hitting Burblefish later on, creates a 1-1 body for a blocker, also pressures Elise level up. Calling Strike, this is the Tekton card, this is the choice that I'm going with this time. This hits a lot of problems in the meta, hits a lot of champions like Aphelios, like TF, like Riven, like uh, Ezreal, Swain pre-level, a whole bunch of stuff, right? And also hits other units as well that are really annoying, like Boxtopus coming out of Crescendum. If you just can't deal with that pressure and you have multiple Calling Strikes, you can use one on him and then save the other one for a Fellows with TF. However you want to do it, Calling Strike, super flexible, hits a lot of things. Uh, Frenzied Skitter, Spider Synergy, also helps you get things into Calling Strike range. You can use this to hit a Fellows and then always be able to Culling Strike him even if they save 2 mana because if they try to Pale Cascade, he will be at 3 attack after the Frenzied Skitter has reduced him, so Culling Strike will still hit, very good there. Risen Mist because we're playing very Mist Wraith heavy in the mid game, this is our pressure, this is how we keep the board and get in a bunch of damage turns um, 4 through 6 using multiple Wraiths coming out and just beating down your opponent with fearsome attackers. For the same reason. Uh, we got the triple Wraith Caller here, you know, same thing, this insanely good pressure tool on turn 4. I love Wraith Caller on attack 4. It's also good if you get an extra one and you can play Caller on 4, Caller on 5, and then follow up with Hecarim on 6. It's just really, really insane mid-game uh, board control. Next we have Double Withering Whale. This would normally be Grasp, but I'm going Withering because of Burblefish and because if opponents go wide with like aggressive creatures, 1 HP creatures, if I fight Jinx Draven, discard aggro, Withering Whale is an absolute blow against all those strategies on top of Vile Feast, just removing them early, Withering Whale, removing them late, it's just super super good there. Next we have Hecarim who is our primary win condition, you have to attack with him once to get his level up condition met later on, so make sure you get Hecarim in a safe spot. Hopefully he doesn't get stunned by Gravitum, hopefully he doesn't get stunned by Arachnoid Sentry or anything like that, because if he gets his attack off, he becomes so insane later on. So we use him, we, we're okay with letting him die, especially after he attacks, because we have Rekindler as a follow-up. Rekindler will re-summon Hecarim, keep the pressure going, uh, keep attacking with him. Hecarim has Overwhelm, so he's really good at pushing in damage, and this just generates more Hecarims for the final finish, which is harrowing, but we'll talk about that in a second. First, we'll talk about Vengeance. Uh, we run it at two of, non-conditional single target removal. It is quite expensive, but when you get Vengeance off at the right time, it's just absolutely insane. It's really good as a response to like Judgment or something, but it's also very good to hit like Leviathan or other really big units like Ladros if they try to Atrocity and you have the mana to respond with Vengeance first. Super awesome there. Um, yeah, it just says kill a unit, that simple. And then we have Triple Harrowing, which is 
you know, what goes along with our primary win condition being Hecarim. You let Hecarim attack, you get multiple Hecarims from Harrowing, get really big attacks, upwards of like 50 60 damage uh, with Overwhelm. So yeah, that's Mono SI. Uh, nothing really too new, it's the same core foundation I've always worked with, but now we run in Culling Strike, right? Makes sense, super good. The next deck that I'm bringing and want to talk about is Pirate Aggro. So Pirate Aggro fell out of favor for eh, a month and a half or so, but it recently got a resurgence with uh, uh, the last patch. Things getting hit, allowing Pirate Meta to come back, and it's been doing very well on ladder, and it's probably my favorite aggressive strategy. Even though Faron got hit, I think this deck is still good, so I want to bring it as my aggressive lineup. Because I'll talk a little bit at the end, but this fits my team comp of my three decks very well. So, starts with the very strong one drops. Butcher becomes a 3-3 three, three if uh, the opponents take damage. Saboteur is the best attack one because it's three damage if left uh, unresolved on turn one. Precious Pet, fearsome. Uh, House Spider, Legion Grenadier, very good aggressive uh, two drops. House Spider is basically a 3-3 three, three split on two bodies. Grenadier is three damage that can also promise you one later. Uh, Misfortune, very strong champion, especially on attack three. She got nerfed, which hurt scouts a whole lot. So she took she took a hit by them removing Overwhelm from her leveled up form. But this doesn't really come up too much in Pirate Aggro. It is technically possible to level her, and if you've done that, you already won just by attacking that many times. But yeah, she's not so nerfed in this variation of Misfortune. So got Noxion Fervor after that. Noxion Fervor is our only three cost or lower spell, so this is a force draw by Zap Sprayfin that makes this combo very consistent. Moving on, we got Petty Officer, a very good three drop as well. If you don't have Misfortune on three, you can't hate playing Petty Officer on one. Sometimes hitting Omen Hawk, which is good. Sometimes hitting Pool Shark for more resources is good. Sometimes you hit Krusty Codger, which is really good. So... We have him in here for that. Island Navigator is my spicy special that I have been running way, way back, and I will not ever change this. Island Navigator has such good synergy with Misfortune. Uh, she's a scout, also summons one cost like Petty Officer, so you get the same really strong potentials. Uh, on top of being able to have scout in a pirate aggro deck, so this turns on a lot more variation of play. So basically, best case scenario, what if you play Misfortune on attack 3, play Island Navigator on defense 4, now you're on attack 5, you open with Navigator plus the Scout, that's an MF attack uh, on top of the one that you probably got with her on 3, so that's an MF attack. Next you play GP on attack 5, so you've attacked with your Scouts, the opponents now have to play, uh, they're lower on mana, they're lower on resources because they have to respond to your damage and they have to block and stuff, and they've taken damage from MF passive. Okay, so that's your scout attack done. They play something, then you play GP. Oh my god, it's so strong. GP now summons Barrel. Your next MF attack is going to deal two to everything that tries to block and to Nexus. And you just get to attack all over again. You have GP up there. You got Misfortune still on the board. You got your scouts still doing work. Like, it, it's just absolutely insane tempo tool. And that's one of the big reasons why I like it over Zap, rather than having only Zap as your 4 drop, which is most often a tempo loss because it's just a 4 mana 2-2, two -two. it's a good elusive blocker and all, but Island Navigator just pushes the deck to the next level in my opinion. So yeah, we got Zap, really good for 4 strong fervor, really good burst, uh, defensive elusive blocker, so it can block Ezreal, it can block Teemo, it can block Zoe, so we got all that going for it, triple decimate, big boy damage, just trying to finish the game with that. GP, of course, being the other champion in here, very strong, especially if you get him leveled, basically a game over. Uh, Jack the Winner generates you two damage every turn. This is awesome because you can target your own barrel with this, so you're not actually dealing damage to your own allies, and it will still deal three to the enemies because barrel will amp it. Very good, or not to the enemies, but to the enemy nexus. Very strong burst option there. Um, and then Captain Ferron, when I'm summoned, create two decimates. Eh, you, you know, you just get two instead of three. You never really needed three in this list, so just generating two decimates is fine. Uh, yep, Farron's a good finisher. He's really good if the game is going a little too late for your liking, because he's an 8-8 eight eight with Overwhelm by himself, which pushes a lot of damage, but also the eight damage that he generates from decimates, very, very strong. So yeah, that's it for Pirate Burn. The last deck I want to talk about is obviously the most controversial one as well. I want to bring Deep. I've gotten a little bit of slack, I've gotten a little bit of uh, encouragement to bring it. I, I hear both. 
My take is that deep is honestly okay. It's not that great in ladder because there's a lot of strategies that just shut it down. But in tournament format, it's a completely different game. You have to think about how your decks work together. You have to think about band baiting. You have to think about uh, leads and anchors. It's like You have to think of it like it's a fighting game or like a Pokemon team where your decks are working together. And deep fits a certain role in my lineup very, very well. So I'll go into that in a little bit. But first, let's talk about the deck itself. We run in the triple dreg, the triple jettison. Triple Thorny, Triple Vile, Dead Bloom. This is all pretty standard. Triple Jaw and Triple Slaughter Docks. So this early game is focused on pushing out things that can toss while also being decent blockers. We have Vile Feast for removal for like Zoe and stuff. Triple Jettison is insane for just getting uh, deep as fast as possible. I like to keep deep in or keep Jettison in my hand versus control decks because I'm able to just like spend the extra mana to jettison every once in a while and not really feel too pressured. So it's a good punish card if you're fighting control. Next we have Maokai, the first champion. Of course this is super standard, helps us out, gets us tossing, two salvage, don't want to run three because it bricks a little bit, two eye because it bricks a little bit, two withering well. So this used to be grasp but I'm running withering well in this deck for the same reason I'm running it in mono SI in that it's very good against burble fish and it's very good against jinx draven discard aggro the dealing one to a bunch of things is better than grasp deal three to one thing at least in this meta of course this will change you know depending on the meta moving forward so keep that in mind if you are copying this deck <clears throat> two atrocity for game finishes pretty pretty good two devour don't want to run any extra than that because it bricks the three nautilus of course the one shipwreck right quarter because he creates other win conditions and double vengeance for the single target removal same reason as uh, mono si i just like vengeance i think it's really good it's a lot of things that you can't deal with right away uh, if the opponents play below certain mana thresholds and can't protect the unit it's just dead to vengeance and i like that so yeah this is a very very standard deep list i haven't seen too much deviation from this style this is definitely one of the most consistent ways you can run the deck and what it does for me is it allows me to run an anti-control control deck so i've kitted it out with anti-aggro tools and anti-control tools which makes it just very well rounded it can be slotted into my list and depending on what i fight i can use deep to my advantage so for example if the enemies have zombie anivia which I assume a couple people are going to bring, you know, with the whole gluttony being added to the game and helping out that deck. Deep is a pretty good matchup into it from my uh, experience. The One of the first times I got Master, I think it was the second or third ranked season, I played a lot of deep into Zombie and Nivea when Braum got buffed and Zombie and Nivea ter terrorized the meta for like a whole month. And I had like an 80% win rate versus it with deep. It, it, it feels so one-sided as long as you can get Maokai out, get him developed, get him leveled, and then blow up the opponent's deck. What's really cool is that <clears throat> if the opponents try to do um, Gluttony, if you have Nautilus out, you can like Riptide the Anivia back into the enemy's deck and then... Um, blow it up with Maokai and then they have no more Anivias. You can also do Devour to obliterate the Anivia if you're already deep, so that's very, very good. Uh, as long as they don't have Gluttony as a response to that. So it has definitely helped the matchup for that card to be added. It has helped Zombie Anivia, I should say. So it's going to be a little bit interesting to see, but I think that Deep is still going to be a good counter pick to that deck specifically and to other control strategies because I really punish people for not killing me because deep is really hard to deal with in the late game, even for control decks. So, yep, that's what it's doing. So yeah, that's what I'm up to. If any of you want to download a decks, try them out on ladder. I highly recommend Mono Shadow Isles, of course. I highly recommend Pirate Burn. And I think keep deep in your pocket because there's always room for that deck to come back as an anti-control deck. I really like it. I think the deck is fine. A lot of people harp on it too hard, in my opinion. I think it's slightly underrated. It only really... Uh, fails in a heavy Targon meta where there's a bunch of silences and you know Hush just got nerfed and there's a bunch of obliterates being invoked which still happens I understand so it has some bad matchups but you cannot sleep on it for too long especially if there's ever a big meta shift when Sharima comes out who knows if Targon will be seen maybe Deep is a really good counter pick to Sharima decks who knows but I would just recommend keeping it in your pocket keep it in the back of your mind for now 
And that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out since I'm still trying to grow. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, and gameplay highlights in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters.